Hello everyone, my name is Kat Abraham and today we're going to be talking about instructional approaches for students who have autism. So to start, we need to understand exactly what autism is. And autism is a developmental disability. It affects both their social interactions, communication, and overall educational performance. And there's two main criteria when you're talking about social communication impairments. Uh, that includes nonverbal communication, being able to maintain relationships, um, and just overall having social emotional um, opportunities. Uh, a second criteria is having restrictive, rep repetitive behaviors and interests, so being obsessed with something or uh, showing a keen interest in a specific topic. So one thing that we need to understand is instructional practices need to be evidence-based. That means they need to have proven research in order to accommodate the individual needs of a student. A uh, second instructional practice is teachers really need to be properly trained on how to work with students who have autism. Um, trainings can include uh, case research with content details um, and then also different interventions so that they can align that with the student's needs and their curriculum overall. So we're going to talk about some specific practices and the first that you must know if you're going to work with students who have autism is applied behavioral analysis and basically it focuses on engagement within the curriculum and there's not just one recording the uh, aba focuses on multiple recordings and it is evidence-based that ABA has an effective form of intervention for behavior and both academics. Another practice that we should focus on is called PECS, which is the Picture Exchange Communication System. And basically, it's, it's, it's a symbolic system that allows students to answer questions or communicate using the visuals that they see. This can also be used to determine if um, a student is understanding what you are teaching them. So anytime that we talk about a student who has a disability, autism specifically, is they need to have social skills. They need to be taught social skills. So social communication and interaction are such important aspects in terms of interacting just as a as a child in general. Um, some ways that teachers can provide social skills or social interactions are um, having like peer groups or uh, putting a student in a group and giving them uh, a role as part of the group. Other social interactions can um, they can be placed into you can say, hey, what are you doing? Um, oh, is this your friend being able to communicate with them and ask them the questions so they understand that working with other students and working with other kids their age is appropriate. One way that you can incorporate social skills and appropriate interactions in the classroom is by using social stories. And they can be written by a teacher, a parent, or students can even write them as well. Basically, it helps them navigate through um, difficult situations or things that they don't understand. You could make social stories for fire drills, um, playing at recess, um, being walking in the hallways. Anything can be made into a social story and it really encourages appropriate behaviors and they're able to read that as well. One of the last um, practices that I'm focusing on is engaging materials. So I'm talking about things like a reward system, like a token board or a star chart um, that you see on the left hand side. And these tangible rewards, along with encouraging positive praise from the edge from the teacher or the para really help with an individual's um, just level of interest and level of need. 
So um, the best way that you can use a token board is having them complete a task like a math worksheet and giving them stars or tokens along the way. That way at the end, before they need to transition to something else, they're able to have that um, like an iPad or five minutes with toys or something that they have a high level of interest in. So then they know that they can earn those stars or those tokens again at a later time. So we need to figure out if these practices are working and the ways that we do that is by collecting data. It is incredibly important to figure out how a student's performance is going, not just for that day, but across time in general. And the special education teacher isn't the only one that does that. Um, the entire special ed team needs to analyze that data and see if it's working. And if it's not working, take a look at the student's goals and edit or change them to improve the goals for that student. Um, another way to determine if your practices are working are looking at both formative and summative assessments. Um, formative assessments both allow for teacher and student feedback, and it allows the student to have that active participation throughout that assessment. So overall, um, instructional practices are huge when working with students who have ASD. And um, it's important to know that specifically designed instruction will improve both, both their social and emotional skills as well as their academics. Teachers need to make sure that they're using research-based practices that align with their curriculum and the circumstances of that student, such as ABA, social stories, other supports and engaging materials, et cetera. Um, lastly, teachers need to be reflective and check to see if their instructional practices are actually working with the student. That way, the student can uh, maybe spend more time in the general ed classroom or their goals can be more challenging for them. This is all going to improve um, based on data based on evidence-based practice and based on how the teacher interacts with the students. Thank you for joining me today and I hope you learned something new about um, both autism in general and ways that you can instruct students who are on the spectrum.